What's going on guys? It's Greg here, aka New York Prepper. In this video, I'm going to test the penetration of some Brennick 12 gauge 2 and 3 quarter inch Special Forces Maximum Barrier Penetration Slugs. These slugs are 1 and 3 8 ounce and they have an advertised velocity of 1,650 feet per second and an advertised muzzle energy of 3,545 foot pounds. And the goal of the test is to see how many sheets of standard half inch drywall this slug can penetrate through and to see if it can penetrate deeper than a standard one ounce soft lead slug. And this slug is marketed towards law enforcement and special operations. Brennick says that it uses an exceptionally hard alloy that allows it to penetrate through barriers such as windshields, wheel rims, tires, and vehicle engines. So we're gonna see in this test if this slug can penetrate deeper than a regular soft lead slug inside of regular half inch drywall. And this is good to know because if you plan to use these slugs for home defense, you wanna know more or less how many walls it would take to stop this slug in case you live in a crowded area and you have neighbors around you or you live in an apartment complex you want to know how many walls this slug would penetrate through so hopefully this test will give us an idea of how many walls it would take to stop this slug and whether this slug can penetrate deeper than a regular one ounce soft lead slug so I'm going to be shooting these loads out of my Remington 870 with an 18 inch cylinder bore barrel and we're going to be shooting at a distance of about 15 yards. I've stacked up the half inch drywall tightly together and put it into a wooden jig to hold them tight and at the end of the test I'm going to go through all of the sheets of drywall with you one by one to show you the damage that the slug did to the drywall and we're going to see exactly how many sheets of drywall this slug penetrated through and then I'm going to weigh the slug to see how much weight it retained. We're going to take a closer look at the slug to see if it deformed. So stick around and I hope you enjoy this test and I do believe that slugs are a great option for home defense. So I think this test might be useful for you guys that use slugs for home defense. So let's see what happens here. All right, guys. Brennick, two and three quarter inch, one and three eighths ounce, special forces, maximum barrier penetration slug. Some kind of a hard alloy slug. Let's see what it does to sheetrock and see if... It's everything it's advertised to be. All right, guys, welcome back to the New York Prepper Top Secret Ballistics Analysis Lab in rural Pennsylvania, a.k.a. my garage. 
and I want to go through all the sheets of drywall with you guys. So the Brennick 12 gauge, two and three quarter inch, one and three eighths ounce special forces maximum barrier penetration slug traveling at 1,650 feet per second and generating 3,000. 545 foot-pounds of muzzle energy only penetrated through 17 sheets of half-inch drywall or sheetrock. And again, this is standard half-inch drywall. This is the drywall that is used throughout the United States in interior walls of a residential structure. So I was expecting deeper penetration with this slug just because it's a harder alloy slug than a standard shotgun slug, which is normally made of soft lead. So this slug penetrated the same amount of drywall as a standard one ounce 12 gauge slug. Okay, so I've done a test before with half inch drywall and I'll leave a link up above. I shot a variety of 12 gauge ammunition at drywall. I tested a three inch, one ounce slug. I tested a two and three quarter inch double lot buckshot load. I tested some three inch triple lot buckshot and I tested turkey loads and small game loads. So I just wanna share some of the results of that test that I did and compare it to the results of this test. So. Once again, the 12 gauge, two and three quarter inch Brennick Special Forces Maximum Barrier Penetration Slug, which is a one and three eighths ounce hard alloy slug, only penetrated through 17 sheets of half inch drywall. And that's the same amount as the Winchester Super X flat nose three inch, one ounce slug. And the Winchester Super X hollow point traditional rifled slug penetrated through 15 sheets. The Federal Power Shock two and three quarter inch double lot buckshot penetrated through nine sheets. And the Winchester double X three inch triple lot buckshot penetrated through eight sheets. The Winchester Super X two and three quarter inch number six turkey penetrated through three sheets and the Winchester Super X two and three quarter inch seven and a half small game load penetrated through two sheets and if we compare the 12 gauge to some handgun rounds I did this test with some 44 Magnum and 44 Special and the 44 Special 200 grain Underwood Ammunition Gold Dot Hollow Point traveling at 975 feet per second penetrated the same amount as this Special Forces Maximum Barrier Penetration Slug from Brennick. 17 sheets for this 12 gauge monster slug only penetrated 17 sheets the same amount as a 44 Special. And the 44 Magnum with 240 grain Hornady XTP factory loads penetrated through 22 sheets. And the 44 Magnum with Underwood ammo 305 grain bear loads penetrated through 33 sheets. So the 44 Magnum with bear loads basically penetrated double what this slug could do. Okay, so that's pretty interesting, guys. So once again, 12-gauge slugs, they have their pros and cons. They're really good at doing a lot of damage. They're a very large projectile. They can generate a lot of muzzle energy, and anything that gets hit with a slug or buckshot or any shotgun load is going to feel it. Even if you don't penetrate super deep into the vitals, any living thing that gets hit with a shotgun round is going to feel it. It's a lot of energy. So pretty interesting results, guys. I was expecting it to penetrate maybe 25 or 30 sheets, but it basically penetrated the same amount as the Winchester Super X 3-inch, 1-ounce 
rifled slug. That's just a standard rifled slug. It has a advertised velocity of 1,760 feet per second. So a little bit faster than this one, but that one is uh, soft lead, so you wouldn't think it would penetrate as deep as this one. This one is a hard alloy, so you would figure this one would penetrate more, but I guess this drywall, it, it does a good job at slowing down the slug because the slug is just so thick and it just slows it down pretty quickly. So I want to go through all the sheets of drywall with you one by one, then I'm going to pull the slug out. We're going to take a closer look at the slug. We're going to check the weight retention. We're going to see if it deformed at all. So stay tuned. All right, guys. So ignore these bullet holes here. This is from my 10 millimeter test that I did on the same day. So this is where I hit right in the middle. Okay, there's the exit hole on the first sheet. Here we have sheet number two. Sheet number three, sheet number four, you can see these holes are starting to get bigger. Sheet number five, huge hole there guys, look at that. It's probably about an inch and a half in diameter. Sheet number six, sheet number seven, sheet number eight. Sheet number 9, sheet number 10, sheet number 11, sheet number 12, sheet number 13, sheet number 14, okay. Look at the size of this hole here, guys. That is just insane. Sheet number 15. Okay, there's sheet 15. Here we have sheet 16, and you can see the base of the slug right here. Okay, and it penetrated through the 16th and 17th sheet. And I'll show you guys the back of the 17th sheet here. It left just barely penetrated the 17th sheet okay just barely okay so we're just gonna say 17 because it did actually poke through the paper here on the back of the 17th sheet okay and it left this big dent in the 18th sheet look at the size of this dent that is just insane huge dent and no pass through on the back, just a little kind of uh, deformation there, but uh, no pass through on the 18th sheet. So we're gonna say 17 sheets, and um, look at this slug, guys. This thing is just insane. Look at the size of this thing. Absolutely massive. This is one and three eighths ounce, which is 601 grains. That is just a massive amount of lead. I would not wanna be hit by this, and I am critiquing slugs in my videos, but it's not to make it seem like slugs are not a viable option for home defense or self-defense. It's just that you have to understand their limitations. They're not really good at penetrating, but if you're dealing with a two-legged threat, you don't really need a massive amount of penetration anyway. But these slugs are definitely very good for shooting through barriers or shooting through cover. And I think this is an excellent slug for home defense. So again, I'm not trying to bash slugs. I'm not saying slugs are bad. I'm just saying that you have to know the limitations. There's a lot of guys out there that think they're going to use slugs for bear defense. And there's much better choices for bear defense. Even just a 270 with some good partitions or bonded bullets is a much better choice than a slug because although slugs have more energy than a 270 or even a 3006 they're just so massive that it's hard for them to really penetrate you know you're talking about a 
projectile that's three quarters of an inch in diameter. And in order to have this thing penetrate as deep as even a 44 Magnum, you would need a really high velocity and you would need a really well-constructed slug in order to be driven that deep through tissue. So they're just not good at penetrating really deep, but against soft targets like two-legged threats or class two game, or even up to medium-sized bear, you know, 400-pound black bear, 500-pound black bear, this might work. Again, not my top choice. I think just the 270 or 3006 with some bonded bullets or partitions is a much better choice. Something with a sectional density of at least 0.27 or greater would be a much better choice. In a 270 or, or 3006 would be better, but uh, I guess you could use this for medium-sized bear. Um, but I do plan to test this slug in other materials. So we can see what it does in other types of media. So stay tuned to my channel for those tests. I have many more tests planned with this slug. And we're going to just take a closer look now. We're going to see what this thing looks like after I clean off the drywall powder. And we're going to weigh it to see what kind of weight retention it has. So stay tuned. All right, guys, so we're going to weigh this slug now and see what kind of weight retention we got. So I'm going to zero out my scale, make sure that it's zeroed out, and it says pass. That means we're zero. Just double check. This is a 100 gram weight, and we got 100.01, so it's basically perfect. We're going to switch back to grains now. We're going to take our one and three eighths ounce slug and weigh it. And we got 574.9 grains. So I'm just going to round up to 575 grains. So that's only a loss of 26 grains. So that's 95.6% weight retention. So that's really good. Guys, I'm very impressed by the construction of the slug, even though I'm not impressed by the penetration, but this slug is just super dense. I mean, there's just no deformation at all, besides just some slight deformation around the edge of the meat plat here, okay? Around the edges, the outer edge here. But other than that, the rifling is in good shape. And the nose retained its round tip here. Okay, this is a round nose slug, which is a very interesting design. Most slugs are usually hollow points or flat nose, but this one has a round nose, which means that it's designed for penetrating. Any kind of bullet that's a round nose is designed for penetration. That's what safari bullets have. They have round noses on them so they can slip through bone and tissue and penetrate very deep. And that round nose just acts like a hammer basically and just plows its way through anything in its path. So I'm very impressed by the construction of this slug. This alloy seems to be some type of a hard cast alloy. And I'm really excited to do more tests with this slug. Let me know if you have any ideas in the comments section. I have a few more tests planned, so they should be uploading in the next couple of weeks and the next couple of days. So stay tuned to my channel for more tests with this slug. And you can check out my 12 gauge playlist. I'll leave a link up above. I have all my 12 gauge related videos, including these penetration tests and ballistics tests. Basically all the penetration tests and ballistics tests I've done with my 12 gauge shotgun so far are in my 12 gauge playlist. You can also check out my penetration tests and ballistics tests playlist. I have all of my penetration tests and ballistics tests posted there for a variety of different firearms and cartridges. But uh, look at this slug guys, just beautiful. I mean, 
I'm just truly impressed by the construction of this slug. It functioned the way that they advertised it would. I mean, it kept its shape, didn't deform. So um, I'm really looking forward to doing more tests. That's pretty much it for this one. So the Special Forces Maximum Barrier Penetration Slug from Brennick penetrated through 17 sheets of regular half inch drywall and that's the same amount of penetration I got with the Winchester Super X one ounce soft lead slug traveling at 1760 feet per second and that was in a test that I did about a year ago and I'll leave a link up above to that test if you want to see it but that's pretty much it for this one guys let me know in the comments if you have any ideas for future tests with this slug I'm really curious to see what it can do against some other materials and I really want to shoot it at some hard objects to see if it can penetrate through hard objects so let me know if you have any ideas for me and as always take care God bless and don't forget the three P's prepare practice and persevere